Okay, what I've done, these are four legs. Um, I didn't have a board long enough, so I just put an offset in it right here. That's why I couldn't use this corner down here to start our home from. So it's in the upper right, our lower right corner, which is right there. My gantry is over here. So I'll move my gantry back and I'll home it in the upper, our lower right corner, as I showed you on the video when I made it. And then it's going to cut a board right here about five inches and then it's going to jump up here and cut one. And if you remember I made my home high enough so that I can miss this clamp that's holding it together right there. So that's what's going to happen. I'll set this up so you can see the machine working from about this angle. Alright, it's all set up. If you look, what I've done is my turning center is still up here in front. But I've got a long bed here. So it's uh, 50 inches of cutting distance from here, basically, all the way down to the other end. So this is about a 20 inch area that I'm going to cut, or 30, yeah, something like that. Anyway, I'm going to cut less than 20 inches. So. I've zeroed it over there on the right hand side. So it's all set to go. And I start it up, fire it up, and you'll see it on the video how it cuts the dado. Okay, if you look, each one of the legs is clamped down on both ends, and then they're clamped together with that clamp. And if you look at the clamp, it just fits in between the C and C. If you look on that side, and it clears a lot of space on that side. And before I cut it, actually, I run it from one extreme to the other because it's uh, from here to where the second cut ends is 21 and a half inches. So I wanted to make sure I had that much movement. And if you look at it, I do. I actually have extra. I can go farther. You see it down here, I've got another eight or 10 inches, but I don't need to. That's the end of it. Plus, it'll be getting into all those clamps. All right, it's already started. I forgot to start the camera, so uh, I guess you have to bear with me. Let me zoom in a little more, and you can see the cuts already started. And there's two cuts. This is the first one. And one of the reasons I'm doing it this way is the wood is unlevel. This is rough sawn wood that I I don't have a planer, so I run it through my joiner to warm it up or to smooth it out. Uh, planer's on my list, but I haven't got it yet. I want to get one of those that has the, so the one straight blade has all the individual knives and that's about 1800 bucks. So anyway, this works. Okay, this is the actual cut speed. We're going to speed it up here so you can see how fast it cuts through. It takes two passes because you remember they're going to be a quarter inch deep. And if you look at it, you notice the one closest to us is quite a bit deeper. And that uh, one by is a lot thicker than one by, but uh, it is what it is. Like I said, I don't have a planer, so I couldn't make them all the same height. And that's why I chose to use this. It makes it so the shelves are all the same height and from the outside, they're all the same thickness. So that way I can screw them all flat against that back rail and they're all equal. Now it's going to cut the one in the back. Uh, it's 14 and a half inches taller than the one below. So I've got two shelves that are in this table. Uh, the lower two will hold uh, HP 2055 printers and then there's a HP 4600 color printer that sets on top. That's why the tabletop is so thick. I'm going to swing the camera around. Hopefully it didn't make you dizzy there. And so you can actually see the cut in progress. So it's clean. That's a pocket cut that we've talked about before. It's a standard pocket cut. So you can use your CNC as a, basically as a tool in your wood shop. This is a picture of the final version. I would have made some changes. I would have mirrored the right side and left side so they look the same. But, um, you know, it's the first table like this I've ever made. So it came out pretty good. It's functional. It does the job. Now it has to be stained and varnished and put to work. So thanks for watching. Have a great day. If you stay tuned, you can see the actual software that I use to create those cuts. So that's next. So watch it if you'd like. I am going to create a new file. And this file is single sided. The width is 22 and a quarter. 
and the height is 36 inches. The thickness is uh, one and a half. And we're gonna machine the surface away. What we're gonna do is make legs for a table. <coughs> the legs are already made. And I'll put a corner caption, let you see the, what they look like on the machine. And what we're gonna do is machine pockets for the shelves to set up. To do that, we have to know where the shelves are gonna be. So I, what I did is I figured out where those shelves are gonna be. Uh, so we're gonna put a guideline in. And the shelf is going to start at five inches. So I'll move this down till I hit five inches. So there's my first guideline. Now if I right click on it, you'll see that it pops up and tells you where it is. Well, I'm going to make <coughs> a slot that's one inch wide and a quarter inch deep. I'm going to need two of those because I'm going to have two shelves on this table. The top part is going to mount right to the top of, this, of the legs. So I'm going to offset or create a new one. This deletes the guide. You come down here where it says create a new one. I'm going to do from absolute position where it is, I'm going to create a line at one inch. If my keyboard works. There we go. So if you look over here, you can see that new line is created. Now I'll close this get on this line and click again <coughs> because I'm going to go 14 and a half inches above this and I'll create that line and if I move to this side you can see it there's the bottom of the first of the second shelf here's the first shelf done something wrong. Let me go back and see what I did wrong. That's my five inch line. That's my 14 and a half, but it should be one inch above this line. So I'm not sure where that line came in. That should be at six inches. So we'll just click on that, say delete guide. And we'll click on this one and say same thing. So we'll try again. If I click on this, you can see the box comes up. Absolute position, oh, I see it. Relative to the guide, create it. Now you see it, see that's one inch above that. The next one's gonna be 14 and a half, and I'm on this original guide, so if I add 14 and a half to one, I get 15.5, and that'll be the line that'll create up here. I want to go one inch above that, so I'll do 16.5 and create that guy. Now I'll close it. So you, if you're doing it relative to a guide, that gives you that, that in relationship to each guide. And I could have done it from the absolute position, which is from zero, zero, and, and gone up. But I, when I measure s stuff, some, a lot of times I measure it from one line to the next. So there's going to be a shelf slot here and a shelf slot here. And I'm going to do that. First thing I have to do is draw some lines. Or I can draw a pocket. That will work too. If I draw a pocket <coughs> and draw here, and then take that box and select it, draw it this way comes out just a little bit. So I want to overlap just a little so I get a clean cut. And then I'm going to take grab it right there and move it down so it fits. Now if you look, let me zoom in, you can see that it doesn't quite fit. So I can go back and click this box and it'll actually show you the size of the box. I want it one inch. Now if I hit one OK or apply, you'll see that it shrinks it down. See it? Close it. And that should be centered with the material, which is right here. And that'll let it overlap a little bit on each side. 
Now, I want to offset. I actually don't want to offset it. I want to array it. <coughs> if you remember, I said this is 14 and a half inches above that. So in the X plane, which is left to right, I'm going to put a zero. And here I'm going to put 14.5. And that's a gap in between. And this is one inch thick, so I should put that 15.5. See, it goes from there all the way up. The gap in here is 14.5. This thickness is one inch, so that gets me to 15. I don't want to make this many of them. I want to make one column and two rows. So I hit copy, close, zoom all, and you see there's a second shelf right there. So I made a box, mechanically shrunk it down, checked the dimensions, you know, it's just a quick dirty way to do it. So I want to cut this out, and I've got a quarter inch tool in there right now, and I'll use it. I could switch to a half inch tool, it'd be quicker but I'm going to use the quarter inch that I've got in there and I'm going to use a pocket tool. So we start at zero, we cut it 0.25 inches because I want a quarter inch on each side. We're going to use, we're going to get rid of these two. I'm going to select the quarter inch end mill, which is right here. Select. Edit it, see what our speed is. You can normally do this at about 120 for the sharp end mill. And our plunge rate should be about 30. We're doing half this step over. I'm going to make it uh, 0.125 as well. Is this a soft pine or poplar? And it, it cuts pretty good. It says we can do it in two passes, which is correct. And we're going to label it shelf pocket and this is 23 by 36 material and we're using a one quarter in mill this calculator and we'll preview it See it? So what I've done, instead of using a dado blade, I've used my CNC router to cut a nice slot in there. Works well. And then my boards will set on that shelf, and I will, I could use my Craig to screw it in the bottom, or I've got some finished screws that I can put in here. So I'll glue it and screw it in place, and then screw the top on up here and I'll have a printer stand so you can do it quickly you can use your CNC for instead of your table saw next we'll go to the shop we'll save this It's a sharp CNC. Sharp CNC. Shop bot. I think it's at the top, if I remember right. CNC sharp. There it is. And we want. Shark CNC USB arcs and inches. Got to check the toolpath. Save. And I'll save it down here. Shelf pocket. Save. Number four. Let me go back and check a couple things. I am going to, I want my Z axis a little bit higher than this is because I've got this held together with a clamp that you'll see in the shop. Uh, so I'm going to make this two inches 
and I can plunge down to 0.2 and go from there. So when I do that, you'll see what happens. It says I have to recalculate everything, which is okay. Because I'll save those paths again. The other issue is this piece of wood that I have is kind of backwards. Uh, and you'll see that. I have offset legs. So I can't zero in this corner. I'm going to have to zero in that corner. So I'm going to have to set this up so that my corner for zeroing is over here. See it? So that shifts everything over there. So if I go here, you're going to see I'm going to have to recalculate this because that was the old toolpath. And it recalculates it for you. You'll see when we get in the shop that I had to move my zero over here. So I did a couple things. I brought this up because there's a clamp in the way here. I want to go over that clamp and not hit it. And I'm going to go off this corner because it works for me in this application. So that gives you a couple new things that you can do if you haven't done that before. And the other thing, of course, that I have to do is save it again. And it's going to save it in the same spot, the same name. Should have asked me if I wanted to copy over it. Oh, that's why. This is a half. I got to do a shelf. Shelf pocket. Save. Yes. And I'm going to do this. Do it again so I can get rid of this other one. Right click on it and says, do you want to delete this? And I say yes and it's gone. That way when I'm out in the lab or the wood shop, I don't get confused looking for, well, which one did I do? So that's the one I do. And that's it. See you in the wood shop.